Now this request says, would you please make a video on creating and using black? I have a black cat and would dearly love to paint his portrait. Let's explore some blacks. Well, we did. We addressed black in Quick Tip 206 uh, called Alternatives to Black, but let's take a slightly different spin on it. Black, it's not a color. It's an absorption of all colors, or some people would say absence of all colors. And normally when people are painting black, they'll reach for the color black. Well, if you reach for the color black, we've got uh, several options. Ivory black is the most popular. You only have just a very narrow range of possibilities. In fact, if you're going to do just a monochromatic painting, uh, just a single ivory black and white is all you need. But if you're painting an animal or any other thing that is uh, pigmented black, then you need to show, need to have blacks that are going to give you some opportunities to give it warm and cool variations. So I've got some opportunities here for you. Uh, you can mix the complements of any two dark colors and create a black because complements neutralize each other. They neutralize the hue out of each other. Black has no hue. Uh, if, it's, if it's a total black, it's really absence of light. But if you have fur on animals, uh, you're going to have something a little bit different. You're going to have uh, the absorption of the light within the fur, but then you're going to have reflection of the light on the, fur, on the fur. And sometimes that, uh, that reflection of light that you see on the fur can take on various colors. It can take on colors that are in the surroundings, or it just can take on uh, a color of the light itself. So let's look at some opportunities and enable you to maybe create lively blacks. So how, how should we start this? Now first of all, Let's just look at some opportunities. This is not the only, these are not the only choices, but these are some major choices and, and choices among colors that you probably already have. So let's start. Uh, one set of colors that can give you black is, uh, the set is composed of ultramarine blue and quinacridone burnt orange. Now why those two? Uh, blue plus orange. One thing that when you're creating blacks rather than bring them out of the tubes, Stick with uh, the ones that are darkest dark and as transparent as possible, either transparent or semi-transparent. And so let's look now at what those two can give you. If you look on my palette here, I have this, uh, the, the options down in a row, and you can see how very, very dark they all are. And this is ultramarine blue, but you can see on the palette, it really looks black. But then if we bring it on the palette and begin to kind of spread it out a little bit, you can see the blue in it. But let's then begin to add a bit of the quinacridone burnt orange and watch what happens to it. The orange will cancel out the hue of the blue and it will give us a nice black. Now here's the neat thing about that. You can just choose, do you want that to be absolutely neutral or do you want it to lean slightly cool or slightly warm? So let's play with that just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to mix, uh, it's hard to see, you have to kind of pull them aside like this to be able to see what it's actually doing, kind of spread it out a little bit. You can actually tell when I do this, you can see the color disappear. And then you can actually tell where there is no longer any color, and then also where it will be cooler and warmer. Now look at, that. Look at the results that this gives us. If we have that mixed pretty equally so that all the color disappears here's your black right there now if i want that black uh if i want it to lean just a little bit warmer i want to have a little bit more life in it i can just pull a little bit more of that uh quinacridone burnt orange into it and just pull it you see it still feels black but you can see you can perceive as, you, as your eye moves across how it begins to feel a little bit warmer. Now, suppose I want to hit that part of the fur where that light is reflecting onto it. Suppose it's a warm light. I can really reach into a little bit of white, pull it right over here, and then just change it very slightly 
and here's what we will get this is a very slightly warmer lighter color well suppose I didn't want that suppose I wanted it to be cooler we could reach into the white again not much it doesn't take very much uh, and then we could reach into the cooler side of it and we would get something like like this now you can see you get that variation of warm and cool especially if you overlap one onto the other you have a much more lively uh, interpretation than if you just use black by itself and of course you can continue to take it if the light the light in some cases will be reflecting much lighter in some places on that fur you might see that light um, actually reach about maybe a middle or even a, a lighter value depending on the kind of light it is and so this then ends up being a lot more lively so like that there you go this ends up being a lot more lively you get a lot more variations now uh, before I go let's look at a comparison now of what you can get if you just use black black by itself here it is I, this is ivory black down here and uh, let's just put that uh, over here so that we get a comparison with everything. Uh, there you see this ivory black. Now I'll reach over into white and pull it into the ivory black to get that uh, the variation in value. And we get one thing. And get it maybe a little bit lighter, but we get one thing. Even adding more white we still get one thing we get a variation in value and that's all but you don't get that reflective color that you can get here all right so there's one option and then we continue now with the other options and show you some of the possibilities another possibility uh, which is a really fun combination but totally different is the ultramarine I mean the uh, phthalo green and alizarin crimson now phthalo green and those and crimson are both really, really strong colors. And so they will just, just jump up and run away from you if you're not careful. Uh, whereas these two are much easier to work with. But let's just see what they'll do when we combine them together. There's the little green. You see how very black it looks already uh, on the palette. But if you pull it out, you can begin to see that little blue-green uh, hue that is characteristic of phthalo green. Now, let's pull some alizarin crimson and just sort of work. Both of these are so strong that we just go real easy, work them in each other. And what you will see happen is that alizarin crimson, when worked into phthalo green, creates another black. There it is right there. A really black black. All right, let's uh, be sure the brush is very well rinsed and dried. Let's compare that black with the black that we made of altering blue and uh, quinacridone burnt orange. Here it is, right there. Let's put that a little bit thicker. A little bit more of the lizard in there. But, um, the thalo really takes over. So you really have to, uh, the amount of thalo plus the amount of lizard crimson you really have to go uh, more heavily with the alizarin. See how deep, what a deep black that is? Now, I don't know whether you can perceive this, but the, the, the uh, liveliness of this black is much more almost vibrant than this black. I don't know if the camera really shows you that, but you can then notice that when, if, you start to, uh, if you start to raise the value. So let's just reach in for a little bit of white and let's raise the value of that just a little bit doesn't take much a little bit more all right now you can see the, the phthalo is kind of dominating you see the kind of blue green blue green uh, feeling that we see coming from the light there how much more lively that is than this just drab gray we see right here now we could also let's see something else here where's the what if that were the light we're doing this, uh, something a little bit different and suppose we had it just a little bit warmer and let's do this and see what happens here it is whoops let's get this a little bit lighter and a little bit warmer 
Okay, a little bit more. See, I, that thaler really does take over. So, uh, play with that. That that's a that was that's a uh, that's an exercise in control. Put a little bit more of that white in it. All right. Now we begin to see that a little bit warmer. Uh, let's just see how far we can lean that. Pull it just a tiny bit warmer. And this is what I'm talking about when I say lively blacks. Is you have, when you use two colors like this, you have the ability to push and pull. Push it a little bit more towards warm. Pull it back a little bit more towards cool, depending upon the kind of light that's reflecting on it. So it makes a whole lot more interesting. There we go. That's a little bit warmer and a little lighter. And so you see, you can almost see the vibrancy there between uh, the warmer version here and the cooler version there. So uh, you could actually combine these. You could use this set of black, this set of black in, in one painting. All right, so, so now you can see lots and lots of possibilities of, of what you could do with just getting variations uh, where your subject is actually black. Now let's go to that uh, third uh, third potential there of the doxing purple and the raw umber. So here they are on the palette, and you can see still very dark on the palette, reading almost black. Doxing purple is another color that is very, very strong, so it's going to eat everything up if we're not careful. But I'm going to uh, put a really good amount of the raw umber in the doxing purple just to show you those two. Now here's the deal about purple. Um, because yellow is the complement of purple, and yellow is the lightest color, a lightest hue in our range of hues, we don't have uh, we don't have a very very dark yellow that um, really works well, except for raw umber. Raw umber is a very very dark yellow, but <clears throat> raw umber is an earth pigment, so it doesn't come in a transparent form. And I want you to notice the difference here. It's a surface quality difference. Let's put this down. Can you see there? Can you see there the difference uh, between this? This is a uh, this is tending to be a little bit warmer and uh, a little bit uh, richer uh, than this. Now let's see what happens if we add the white to it. Uh, a little bit. Now, now you notice when I do this on the palette. This is kind of interesting. The purple dominates. So I'm going to pull just a little bit more of that um, raw umber into it. Because remember what we're dealing with there. Two colors that are extremely opposite in their tinting strength. The oxygen purple is very strong. Very, very strong. The raw umber is very, very weak. That means that it's going to take a lot more raw umber uh, to get that, that neutrality into the doxin purple than it does, for example, these two that are very, very strong. The phthalo green and the alizarin crimson. It takes more alizarin crimson because phthalo green is so strong, but not quite as much. And then these two are pretty much equal. So that those things you take in consideration too. All right, now let's see about this one. There we go. That shows you. You see, that's kind of a a richer. That's kind of a richer um, reflection of light than. Well, it's, a, it's just different. Let's not call it richer necessarily. But it's just different. And let's get that just a little bit, get that a little bit lighter, and just a little bit lighter. Of course, you can take those lights up. Now, there we go. We see the purple dominating, but that does give you uh, other options. Get this over here. You can see how the the lighter part reflecting on that. Now, if you look at those, you see all the variety of options that you have if you're using mixtures of complements to create your black rather than just black by itself. One other thing that you might consider when working with black and that is you can take ivory black and you can put or uh, mix into ivory black any one of these colors and I won't go into that now but it's something else for you to explore and then you change you add hue into it and by adding hue into it, uh, then when you are showing the reflected light, you're going to get uh, variations in warm and cool and little suggestions of hue that might be reflecting from uh, the reflective light around in the atmosphere. So exploring all these together, 
don't cut yourself off just by staying black, but uh, explore different opportunities of how you can give little variations as you raise the values, as you show the reflected light, and then that's going to give you more lively blacks and a more lively painting. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.